What is your name? I'm Terry. Terry Sam. Nice to meet you. All right. Without further ado, let's start. I want to talk a little about what this course is about. It's going to be the first part is just basics. We're going to start with. Um, well, let me, let me take a step back. I, I run a course with Amina for the last five years and has taught me a lot about things that we could do better. And so this sort of mini course is intended so that you can understand what, what we've distilled from that. And we try to make this a very effective mini course where you're going to get well grounded in a short time. I believe that a, a large part of this is to have a good overview. So we're, you're, I'm going to give you a very bird's eye view first. And then you're going to get a step-by-step -step overview by Dr. Kabaker. And then you're going to go through every phase of the procedure. Then you're going to get your hands wet doing this. And I really believe that in about five minutes, actually about 10 seconds watching you make a movement with your hand, even if you've been doing hair for 5, 10, or 15 years, I will see that things may be off. And you, all I've got to do is make some minor corrections and watch you again. And that level of correction is amazing. So we're going to do some hairline design, some graft dissection, some uh, recipient side creation, and clearly, we can't teach you to do everything in five minutes, but we can teach you is to be thoughtful. And a large part of this as a facial plastic surgeon by background for myself is that my colleagues in general have looked at hair transplantation as exquisitely boring and tedious and unfulfilling. And I can tell you quite the contrary. It's extremely creative, exciting, and interesting to me. On a daily basis, I get a joy of doing the procedure. And I want to, I want to impart that passion to you. And, uh, may not be able to teach you everything in a day, but I can teach you that this is the first step in a long journey if you're interested in taking that journey. Um, I'm very, very happy that I've been doing this now for 12 years, and I absolutely love my career. I want to first have you understand that Malcolm Gladwell talks about 10,000 hours. It takes a while to get good at something. You can make recipient sites and do them pretty consistently, and you can say, wow, I know how to do this but there's so many pieces to the puzzle that you want to put together over time, and that takes a maturation of many years. The first few years of my doing this, I couldn't really see when something was wrong. I'm having a much easier capacity to do that now. An example, I was sitting next to a colleague in San Diego, a very renowned facial plastic surgeon, and he says, I can spot out a fake result a mile away. And I said, that's not very fair. You probably could say that about a facelift. Um, and I said, the gentleman in front of you has a hair system on, and the gentleman to the right of you has had a transplant in his crown. He goes, I can't see that. I said, of course, you don't do this. And you know, so that level of arrogance, you have to subside. So the, the goal today is to humble yourself and learn, and just start to that journey of, of learning. And this slide, with the Norwood classification, I believe is very, very important, because if you see in every textbook, and you just brush through it. But if you don't understand how hair is naturally lost, in a man, for example, you, there's no way you can create a pattern that looks right. You're going to design a hairline that may look good, but it doesn't fit the Nord classification, the, the ethnicity, the gender, the age, the degree of hair loss. That esoteric elements are things that I want you to begin to grasp. Not grasp it all in one day, but begin to grasp. So that's very, very important is to understand patterns and see patterns. And you're going to you do it in your world. If you guys are plastic surgeons, facial plastic surgeons, dermatologists, whatever you do, you start to see patterns. And my goal is to have you have a, an understanding of pattern development. The next thing is understanding donor dominance. This is the basics. And I, in the past, I would skip over the slide because I assumed everyone knew it. But whether you don't, do know it or not, it's worth mentioning a, a, about a minute. Norman Orntreich in the 1950s found that hair that's genetically programmed not for loss. So if you think of the baldest man, he's got a horseshoe on the back of his head. That hair that's not genetically programmed for loss, that will never be lost, that's moved to the front in a different area, retains the characteristics of its donor area. So it continues to grow and is not lost. Now, there are some exceptions to this, and we don't need to get into esoteric ideas where some of it could be lost and some of it could be et cetera. But the, just the principle is that's how modern hair transplantation works today, is taking hair that's not genetically programmed for loss and moving it into an area that's susceptible for loss, but it retains the characteristics of the donor hair. So that's very, very important to understand that. The other thing that's important is to have this. I really want it, these next two slides, I want you to either photograph with your iPhone, memorize it, think about it, digest it. Because it is an ever-losing battle we're fighting a constant dwindling supply of usable donor hair because of we either depleting it through surgery or we may encroach upon it because the person is balding into it. 
and an ever-increasing demand. And so we have to be ethical with the patient. If you're dealing with a 20-year-old patient rapidly progressing as a worst-case scenario, and you create this low hairline for him, you're going to run out of supply because that demand is so high and the supply is so low. And not only is that high, high demand, low supply, but that, as you see, this is a shifting schedule. So as he matures, you're losing more and more hair and you're having a wider area to transplant. And if you get this low hairline and everything bald behind it, that doesn't fit in a Norwood pattern. It doesn't look natural. And you may not understand that, but you need to project future problems. That's a huge thing. When I teach fat grafting, I talk about how fat is a viable graft, and you can't just stick it in like, like Restylane. It's going to mature and change with metabolic, metabolically, so I project that fat graft 10 years down. You have to project that hair graft 10 years down, and that's something that you're going to start to learn as you go through courses, and this is a lifelong education. The next slide is the second very important slide. Again, these are the two most important slides of this entire presentation, other than the Norwood one. Understanding male pattern baldness. Male pattern baldness is not you have hair one day and it's gone. Hairs go from a thick terminal hair to a vellus hair. So if anyone is starting to thin, go look at those thin, shorter, clear, semi, you know, transparent, wispy hairs, miniaturized or vellus hairs. The transition is like a chemistry. If you think of high school chemistry where we go from, you know, the sort of equilibrium that shifts, except unfortunately this shifts all in one direction toward nothingness. And the, the follicle is actually still in the, in the skin. It's just not visible anymore. And what you want to do is understand this so that what you can help a patient understand is that if they've got miniaturized hairs, they, those hairs can be brought back in equilibrium towards somewhat toward thicker hairs using the medications, which we'll talk about briefly, and then I think Dr. Ballin will go through more in detail. But the, that equilibrium, we want to shift back toward terminal hairs. And we can shift some of that population back and slow down the equilibrium moving in the wrong direction. So a huge part of this is as surgeons, and as we think too much of just a big hammer and a nail, just surgery, 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 but we gotta look at this process evolution of hair loss and slow it down with medicine. So please don't step out for the medical management uh, lecture because it's critical. If you're not teaching your, your patients about medical management, you're doing a disservice to them because today we can slow down and re somewhat reverse that hair loss process. Uh, Phil, I mentioned the, the things you wanted. Um, so that is so important that you understand this, this slide and teach your patients this slide. In fact, during a consultation, I will mention this so that they understand this. So we have two FDA cleared medications. I'm not gonna go through this because we're gonna hear, uh, John is gonna talk about it, Dr. Ballin's gonna talk about it, but these are synergistic. They're not redundant. They, they help in different ways to help you with your hair loss. So I don't tell patients, if you're on Rogaine, don't worry about, or if you're on Minoxidil, don't worry about finasteride. Do as much as you can, because everything has a side effect profile. It has a cost. It has a uh, compliance issue, and you want to factor all those things in when you counsel a patient. Today, we have a lot of different ways. Uh, we have PRP. A cell inject injections to minimize loss to help with surgery. We've also got some camouflaging products and we've got some uh, in-home laser devices as well or in-office laser devices that can also help. And these are all different ways now that we can treat a patient in a holistic and global fashion rather than just doing a transplant for them. And I really believe that it's important you discuss the, this with, with not necessarily every patient, and the way that I make that decision is I divide my consults into green, yellow, and red lights. Red lights are young patient, they really shouldn't have surgery. They're gonna have a disaster. If they have surgery, they're a red light, but they need to be all medicine, no surgery. A yellow light is someone that maybe, let's say mid-30s, you know, decent donor supply, they're gonna, but I'm worried about them. They need to be counseled about medicine, and they can be counseled on the, the surgery and the pros and cons. A green light is someone, let's say, great donor density, um, enough to cover the loss or 65 years old. I may not even talk about medicine, I may briefly mention it. And so that is a really, a, because that whole evolution of supply and demand, I'm focusing on the future of problems and that medicine is trying to stave off future problems. So that's something that I, that is in my head. And if you divide your consults into green, yellow, and red, you can start to conceptualize how to better counsel a patient. And then just understanding the geography of the head. I'll go through this more when I talk about recipient side creation. 
but ha how hair grows on different parts of the head is different. So you don't make the same angle and direction on each part of the scalp. And what my real passion is when I'm doing recipient site creation is I love to design. I'm a designer at heart. I love making different sites and different, these are just some examples of design work, if you will, just creating, you know, in the crown or a, a female hairline. And at the end of each procedure, which I will show you more examples during my recipient side talk, is I'll do a little drawing, and the drawing helps my staff who are placing know where and where, where to place everything. And it's a record for the future that I know what I did and what I may need to do to, to modify to, to improve things. Uh, the easiest thing that I've developed in terms of discussing the regions of the scalp is a box because there are vertical and horizontal planes of the head. And if you conceptualize it this way, I think it makes it much easier for you. The hairline is basically the transition from a vertical scalp called the forehead to a horizontal, horizontal position. And that point where it changes over, glides over, okay, is the point where the hairline, the lowest acceptable point of the hairline. And as you transition from the horizontal to the vertical here, this is called a lateral hump. Again, don't worry about memorizing all these terms, but you're going to start to understand that these hair grows differently in each of these areas. And as the hair goes from horizontal to vertical on the back side, that's the crown. So these are ways that you can conceptualize the regions of the scalp in a simplified fashion. And this is just to remind me to tell you that how you make those recipient sites are going to be angled in a different way based on the geography of the scalp that we discussed. And again, just to remember, hair grows differently throughout the scalp. And so if I, I want to conclude with the comment that this can be fun and creative and enjoyable. And if you make it tedious, then you don't understand hair well enough. If you want to make it creative and enjoyable, then you're beginning to understand that that is the first step in a lifelong journey of creating beautiful work. I want to invite you guys. I unfortunately cannot make it this year because of the time change with this program, but October 8th through 11th, the ISHRS, International Society of Hair Restoration Surgeries in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and also a course that Amina and I have run for six years now in St. Louis on October 23rd through 26th. Thank you. And next up.